Hey everybody, how's it? Aloha, this is Jeeps here, your old composer here at the Decomposer Lounge. And this is another one of my long form shows. This is going to be featuring Radiohead. First, I want to thank everybody from Patreon uh, that helped me produce this. Um, for those who don't know, I have Patreon and um, I sent out a poll, I went back and forth with people and they helped me choose the songs. Uh, speaking of which, also the songs that I ended up choosing from what they posted, I also tried to represent different albums. So there isn't anything chronological about it as far as, you know, when an album was released, is it in a trajectory or anything like that. These are the songs that were random sent to me. I also had to double check and make sure that I didn't um, do them before because I think I've done about 12 Radiohead songs on this channel already. That playlist will be down below. Um, also, I want to say I have chapters, as you can see. Uh, you can just take your mouse, and if it's your favorite song, or you don't want to hear me with my breakdown at the end of a song, you just want to get to the next song, you can always skip over with the chapters. And finally, I want to thank all of you for your support. Uh, this has been an incredible journey for me. The long form thing is actually something very cool is starting to happen with the long form thing I'll share with you guys in an upcoming uh, video. But, um, you know, as usual, if you see video um, ads through this video, they're not mine. They're all copyright claims and it's all for Radiohead and, and for the band and the publishers and stuff. So I do this because I'm having fun doing this. But if you want to support me, you know, the cup of coffee, check out the headsets I'm wearing, check out my Patreon. Some people don't want to buy coffee. They want a little something for their money. So you go to Patreon. I, and I think I even have one or two Radiohead songs there that I've done. Uh, you can always check the links down below. All right, so the very first song coming up right now is from the album OK Computer, and the song is called Airbag. So let's do this. Radiohead on my long form show. Whew, this is going to be a fun video. This is Airbag from the uh, CD OK Computer. All right. Per usual, never a good place to stop anywhere in a song, but that's what this channel's about. The textures of the instruments and the changes in the engineering techniques is so incredibly abstract, but so powerful. Now the opening with the distorted guitar and the cello, sounds like, 
Um, what, what a great marriage in, in sounds. And, and, and once again, in that texture, you have a live organic string sound as the cello, and then you have that distorted guitar. <coughs> Um, and then the drums, when the drums came in, once again, just leaning a little bit into the engineering aspect, it sounded like it was kind of an overdriven, blown out drum kit. And so it kind of created this, this, this energy that I, I'm not necessarily used to, because I'm not anywhere near all the Radiohead songs that I need to be listening to. But this is a big departure than, than some of the tracks that I have heard and done on the channel. Then obviously when he comes in with his vocals, it is such a compliment to the arrangements and the textures uh, in, in which the instruments are, are being uh, heard. You know, the sounds that they're using, dirty guitar, clean guitar, right down the middle, uh, great engineering techniques. You know, we had a hard left, hard right, electric guitar, cello on this side. Then when it came down into the vocals, the guitar came down into the middle, was holding a great pattern where there's this one note that's kind of hanging out, and that's that note I want to say. Da, da, this note right here is a through line and that's the zip line for me that I'm enjoying listening to. Um, I'm going to get back to this right now. I'll save the rest of what I want to say uh, uh, towards the end because I want to, you know, uh, kind of savor the energy that we've started here. So let me go back a little bit and then uh, at the end of the song I'll, I'll some more remarks. <laughs> they let us off kind of glide on this last like 40 seconds of what it is that they were doing now I've learned a lot uh, by virtue of comments that people have left on many of my videos about um, you know the, whether they're using a theremin or a Mellotron um, what I love about what I'm hearing is is that they have uh, the production the arrangements of it all they don't have they're they're, they're risk-free in blending everything and anything they want to come into this in other words instead of you know a, a, let's just say band, um, an organic band sound, guitar, bass, drums, maybe in a couple overdubs and stuff, even in the, even these occasional synth pads and stuff like that. It's like the, the synthetic textures, those analog or those, you know, the tweaking that they're doing on the synths to get the sounds that are only one off. And that's, that's the beauty of what I'm hearing is that, you know, being a composer, there's tons of modules and stuff people could buy in synths that, that you can call up a sound and maybe tweak a little bit and you know work with it the purity of, of some of the uh, synth um, sounds that I'm hearing in the background are so unique to how they produce the music that they do 
And once again, I want to go back into that lo-fi sound of the drums that I thought was really super cool. But I love the bass. Did you see me kind of do? There wasn't a lot of um, uh, phrasing going around, a lot of the turnarounds there. But what I loved is when the bass came in, it didn't sound like it didn't come in on the one, which gives this whole track an extra little lift with a rhythmic vibe. Because <coughs> with the, excuse me, the vocals are indisputed, uh, undisputedly um, so unique and so wonderful that that base of uh, uh, uh what, what was the word i was i was using before um the the sounds in which the instruments were being recorded on and then his voice so so buttery and so so well um uh, how do I say it? I, I, I'm kind of a little lost for words for it, but it, it was this was just a really super great track, and it was something that I was not, you know, expecting. I don't know what to expect, truly, but um, this was fantastic. Now, we're going to move forward to the next song, which is off of, uh, let me see, Rain... Oh, let's see, is it? Yeah, it is. In Rainbows, and this is uh, another one that came very highly suggested to me by... Um, uh, not only Patreon, but people here on the channel. This is Weird Fishes Arpeggi. So let's go ahead and get that started. Give me a second here. A few moments later. <laughs> okay, here we go. because this is what I do. I'll make this really fast. Those unbelievably beautiful arpeggiations. Once again, we're talking about <clears throat> different textures in, uh, yeah, that was the word I was looking for in that other <clears throat> uh, video I did. Um, 
there are four there are multiple rhythmical arrangements going on syncopated playing with time uh, and it's so it's so accessible and it and what I mean by that is it's a lot of times when arrangers and composers you know intertwine a lot of things from you know this syncopation or meter changes or you know the drum is a straight forward the drum is the zip line that drum is keeping us really nice and straight and uh, and I love the fact that it's got that kind of double time vibe you know compared to the other arpeggiations da -da 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 and then there the other arpeggiations guitar playing and even the bass I'm I'm having a bit of an of an issue hearing whether I hear the bass on the low notes doing what he's doing, but there it sounds like, and I could be wrong because I don't know how many overdubs they have going on here, that the bass uh, after he hits his you know his bottom end notes on on the instrument, it sounds like he comes up and does a little arpeggiation here up at the top. It's not not quite an arpeggiation, but he's got some phrasing that he's doing there. And, you know, those tones sometimes can combine with the tones. If it is a guitar player that's EQ'd a very unique way, sometimes it can be a little conflicting, at least with me, me and my ears and stuff. Um, and then each one of these um, uh, instrument, it's, uh, arrangements have just such a, such a wonderful... The engineering here is just absolutely wonderful. Everything, everything, even the the songs that I've heard uh, before, like Creep or, or or even the one I just did with Airbag. The engineering is just absolutely phenomenal on this, and the ambience that each one of these instruments have a little bit of reverb on it, not enough to muddy it up. That's the key there. There's such there's such wonderful uh, arpeggiations and arrangements happening in different, you know rhythmical values let's say the accents are also different it doesn't have it doesn't mean it has to be so incredibly complex where two or three different time meters or stuff it also could be where the accents are in the phrasing that make you feel like it's got a different vibe anyhow the engineering is fantastic and I just I, I, look and it took me this far because I was so entrenched in it and I'm sorry if I blew the vibe but that's what a reaction video is here but let me continue on with this, and then I'll, uh, I'll go back a little bit, and uh, when we're done, I'll yap a little more. Here we go. I get eaten by the worms And wet fishes Picked over by I got to a place where I forgot what I was doing as far as listening and, and dissecting um, the tracks to just getting in, into the fact on how amazingly their blend of ethereal 
use of, I don't, look guys, I, I don't know. This, you tell me or something, whatever, whatever pads they're using or keyboards they're using and stuff, their blend of creating this ambient ethereal, long pulling vibe in their songs while they have these wonderful little arpeggiations going is so, uh, it's trance-like. In, in the way I'm hearing it. And for me too, you know, my whole life has been about dynamics and, and it, which is very important in media composition. And dynamics in the sense left and right. What's the create, what, what is it creating in here now? Because, you know, people who have studios or people who listen to music in proper stereo, this is what this experience is for me. Not, not to take away from people who are not sitting in front of, you know, stereo or good headsets and stuff like that. Because the melody is paramount. His performance as an artist is paramount. It's, it, it's what makes this all come together. This is the Radiohead and the Led Zeppelin and, and a Beatles or any band that I do here is, th the signature is the lead singer and the personality of that expression which connects to us, I believe, uh, on a larger audience than let's say you know the guitar players and the bass and the drums not to take away from what they bring to the power of the music but the connectivity is usually through you know the lead singer and he just it's it's just mind-numbing that through all this intense composition and stuff that his his consistency and his performances and stuff like that still somehow steps way up into into the power of the song and just guides you through it with all this, I don't know, creative joy, if you will, with all these arrangements. There's a couple times when I got back in, there was that, you know, everything just about ended except for these two arrangements. It sounded like keyboards that had two different uh, layers going on. But, <coughs> excuse me, did you hear that? Tick, 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 Very lightly in the back. And that's part of what I love about what I this journey that I go through with Radiohead is that they'll take these elements and blend them in a way where it's not intrusive the way I'm hearing it. And what I mean is, is that even in the first song in Airbags, yeah, it got a little more grittier with the synths and stuff, but it wasn't intrusive in the overall composition. And that blend is so difficult to do. And, um, you know, this... Just insane. But anyhow, also the bass kind of cut loose a little bit in the last half of this, and I love that. You guys know how I feel about that. So, All right, guys. Let's get on to the next one here. Uh, this comes to us from the Kid A uh, record. And which one is this one? What am I doing here? Oh, my goodness. Oh, this is called Morning Bell. So let me uh, set up for that, and uh, let's get on it.
I'm sorry, but I'm starting off with the bass on this. Um, well, hang on for a second. What a wonderful, beautiful melody. His intervals, the one thing that's wonderful that I just love about his voice when I listen you know, to their body of work <clears throat> is that even when he seems to push a little more, the textures that he keeps in his voice that are so consistent that thread through even some of his more powerful you know, expressions uh, as he's performing, it's, it's, you know, to have a voice of that tone and that nature uh, as well, too, it's very unique. You know, it's like Getty Lee, you know, from Rush, a very unique tone. And, and each one of these singers that, that we all love have their own unique tone. But to be up there in that higher register and stuff like that, and to be able to punch through songs, you have what I would consider a a bit of a wider opportunity to use beautiful intervals which are the spaces between the notes in his melody and so but I do want to get back to the bass I'm going okay let's get a little bass in here and bass player is going it's moving this track he's kind of he's kind of the steam in this kind of mild freight train that's keeping it going with the drummer the drummer's locking down a great rhythm Great engineering. So far, I've heard different, you know, well, these are three different albums. I don't know if they use the same engineer or not. You guys, please tell me if they do or don't or whatever. Um, but what I love about it is, is in this journey with these albums that I have coming that, thus far, you can hear the, the switch ups in the engineering. Once again, bringing in um, uh, the synth sounds, you know, and the programming and the way they do what they do. And not, <coughs> and what I love about this too is that. There's a little percussive part of the arrangement of the synth that comes here on this side, but it's not locked in like a sequencer or an arpeggiator that has, you know, perfect time, you know. A lot of times I'm hearing things where it's like I'm hearing the rhythm pattern, but either they have a pre-delay on something like that that's slightly laid back, you know, and it's slightly off uh, the rhythm, but it doesn't disrupt, obviously, but it's not like it's... A sequenced kind of thing so so far every time they ever bring in any kind of keyboard work synth work analog be it digital whatever it is that they're using it just never seems to be sequenced it seems to be played like on the spot you know today's day and age we can do anything with our DAWs and sequence this and everything it just seems that to me gives it more of an organic vibe be it synth or analog is the fact that it feels like it's being played. All right, let me go back a little bit and I'll finish this off in uh, more remarks at the end. Here we go.
You know, I love about that ending is that it really gives you a feel for the actual bass playing that's going on there. And when I say that, it's the nuances of um, hearing a little bit of, of fret noise or a little bit of string noise that's happening, you know, as he's performing it. Whereas, you know, when you're playing a keyboard, you don't, you don't hear any of this happening. You're hearing, you know, what's coming out from, you know, obviously what the pianist or the keyboardist is playing. Once again, they have this ability to just envelope in all the elements of musicality in their songs. And what I mean by that is, is they bring in these synths or these soundscapes that don't necessarily have tonal value, but they have emotional value you know, depending on how you connect with the songs and the lyrics and everything that's going on. And I know a lot of you people are probably saying, God, he's not saying anything about the lyrics. Remember, my channel, the way I do things, lyrics will come a little later. I listen, uh, you know, I listen to everybody as a musician, everybody, lead singer to bass player to drummer to keyboardist, arranger, and then all the, you know, other musicians that come in. You know, I glam on that whole thing. And also, <clears throat> before I move on to my fourth and final song, yes, four, um, what I love about what I've heard so far and what they seem to do is always give us enough time to sink into a bit of a pattern and then they start to build and add these other arrangements. And they're so meticulous in the sense that the, the, the sounds that they choose for these layers represent these different pockets tonally. So there isn't a lot of like, you know, there aren't tones that are stepping on each other. And when I mean tones, I'm talking about, you know, mids, highs, lows, the EQ range. So this could be one arpeggiation going here, <clears throat> excuse me, but let's say it's got more of a dull muted sound. And then another arpeggi arpeggiation up here, a little bit more of a thinner crystally sound and stuff. So each one of them has a representation in that EQ spectrum, you know? And then of course <laughs> the engineer has to do his or her magic, you know, uh, as they do what they do. So, all right. Also, I want to say at the very beginning of this song, I'm so sorry if this was part two of another song, forgive me. I'm a first time listener. I'm pulling the songs. <laughs> I'm playing them. So I do apologize for that. So uh, be gentle, you know, if you decide to smoke me in the comments. Okay, finally, the last song that I have here is, um, let me see, let me take a quick crack at this standby for a second. This one comes from... Ba -ba 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 -ba. Uh, oh, okay, so this is from The Benz, okay, so, and this one's called Fake Plastic Trees, so, uh, yeah, can you believe that? I squeezed four in on the show for you guys, so let's do this, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> oyster on the half lung, I'm gonna drink some coffee while I listen to this, this is my fourth and final radio head here on the long form show from the album The Benz, this is Fake Plastic Trees. Trees. The green plastic watering can for a fake Chinese rubber plant and a fake plastic girl. Bought from a rubber man in a town full of rubber plants to get rid of itself. The words of love, the words of love. Who is around? 
You know, I gotta stop somewhere and I'll go back. I'm so glad that that last like 12, 15 seconds that we heard was just the vocals and that kind of organ. I wouldn't know if it was organically created through Hammond or B3 or, or something, or if it was, you know, created. But what I loved about that is that kind of gave us a peek or a listen into what they did when that phrase or when that part of the song came up earlier. And what I loved about what I heard earlier, and, and could have been my ears, probably is. <laughs> so when this phrase came up earlier, I heard the organ in the background, but it sounded like there was another wider overdub happening there uh, that had a different percussive arrangement. Very possible, there's no two ways about it. I don't know everything short of anything <laughs> when I listen to try to figure out how people do what they do when they record it. And those of you who are fans, you've watched them live, seen all their videos and whatever. But it did sound like there was another kind of percussive kind of vibe to it that was happening. This to me is the straight, of, at least on this show, on this video, the straightest sounding song, you know, with the guitar, very clean and crystal. They've got these beautiful, softer, ambient, ethereal style arrangements that come in that give you that drift. Beautiful melody. You see me, kind of my spine go when he goes, da 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 da. And it, <clears throat> I can't do it. <laughs> but you, can, you kind of feel that. It pulls. And I'm picking up some of the lyrics on this one I can't help. And wow, I definitely have to go back and I will be going back to each one of these songs and just uh, listening to the lyrics when, uh, or reading the lyrics when I go uh, edit this. Um, but I, once again, like I said earlier, I love how they establish a pattern. And even though there are turnarounds from the pattern, like a pre-chorus or something, you know, that does change, they just get us gliding into this pattern. And thus far, now it sounds like we're about to hit more of a bigger pocket, and I don't know what's ahead of me. But very straightforward. This, uh, there was another song that I did earlier uh, in the year, or later last year from them, that had that same thing. It's just, they have these patterns, sometimes they'll... they'll you know, some of it is predictable that they're going to keep it going, but what's not predictable is the arrangements. You know, these, these additional arrangements are so wonderful, and they create such a glide. Every song so far has created some kind of a glide path, you know, emotionally for me as I've been listening to it, you know. And even the song, even the first one, I think, that had a little bit more power through it, there was still that ability to do that. Anyhow, I'm going to finish this song. And uh, then, then I'll say my, my closing remarks and sign off. But uh, let me go back a little bit so we can glam, glam into what I think is going to be a more robust section.
so classic and so powerful um, the arrangements are on this track and you know it is such an art form to do arrangements and 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 my my background is as a composer my father did a lot of string arrangements for John and Drossick and Five for Fighting who I kind of in the same genre I'm not going to compare Radiohead with John, but John uh, or Five for Fighting was very organic around great arrangements and stuff. But then when the, my father would get hired to do the string arrangements, watching my father do what he does is when I was really just so overwhelmed with the fact that as, you know, well, my dad said, well, I'm just, I'm doing the string arrangements. It's, it has to stand out of, it has to stand on its own, but yet it has to be such a, a, an integral part of the song for it to survive. And in order to do multiple layers like Radiohead does in their, um, uh, in their arrangements on these songs, it's not about how many notes per arrangement, meaning like, you know, harmonies, if, if you're doing vocal harmonies that are big, fat, and rich. What I find that these arrangements super excel at are these beautiful wide open intervals in the arrangements, be it guitar, be it you know keys or whatever it is or even I, I forgot I think it was the second song that I heard and the vocals also at the very end he's holding out these long beautiful notes to give you that ambient ethereal vibe that I was hearing on this side and to me I you know this journey for me about Radiohead uh, especially in the case of people just sending me the suggestions and <coughs> you know Patreon members helping me out and stuff I I I I have to say that I am officially a monster fan of of the band, of the arrangements, the vocals, the lyrics. It's absolutely wonderful, and it looks like I have a shit ton of music to still enjoy from them. So uh, I want to thank you guys so much for the journey. Um, I can't uh, express how grateful I am that people still watch my videos. I know that reactions and stuff are you know, doesn't trend anymore, but I just love doing what I'm doing, and the fact that I get to connect with people is just still amazing and wonderful. I don't know what the pivot or trajectory will be in, in this with these long-form shows, but um, I want to thank you so much for everything. Once again, if you want to support me in the channel, if there was any ads that was all copyright claim for Radiohead and their publishers and etc., buy me a cup of coffee or whatever link is down below. Uh, please leave your comments down below. Um, good, positive, negative, whatever they are. Uh, the fact that you're still here. If you're still here, you know what to type in. I'm still here. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I guess, you know, what I find out about this is, too, is that people like to listen to this if they have long drives. I forget now that you can get the YouTube, you know, either through your phone or your car has a, you know, really nice little rig or something like that. So um, I have another one coming next week, and it's going to be from the band Gojira, one of my long forms there, also produced uh, co-produced by my Patreon members, so you know, check that over there. Like I said before, if, if buying a cup of coffee isn't your jam, you know, you want something for your money, you just come over, you know, come in, maybe just hang out just for a month, grab all the great fun stuff, and then dig out, and you know, and that counts as support. Thank you guys so much for everything. You guys have a killer weekend. Aloha. <laughs>